Hello learners of class 10. Welcome to the wonderful world of English language classroom. Learners, we are doing the third lesson first part, his first flight. Learners, in the first part, we read the text, we created subtext that is summarized it, we did some comprehension activities in order to understand the text. Then this is the part 2. Here we will revisit the text by for reading by summarizing, doing some activity, then we will do speaking and writing. Learners, to learn this lesson with me is Divya, of course with you, we will learn this lesson, his first flight. Divya. Hello everybody, today also I am looking forward to learn. We have already completed the first part in the previous video. Fine. Divya. So. After reading the story first flight, so you had some of, you had had some apprehensions whether I will learn to ride on a uh, bike that is a scooty. So have you, has this reading changed something? Yes. Yes? Uh, it builds courage inside me. So you will be able to learn no, now. No, no. That's what fine. Learners, uh, let's not bother about uh, how many times we fall. Learn, learning to ride in a bicycle or trying to do something, even learning to read and write. But by practice, we will be able to read. Okay? We will see the lesson. Before, let me introduce the objectives of the lesson. Myself and Divya will alternatively read. Uh, here are the objectives for you. At the end of this lesson interaction, you learners will be able to read the story, his first flight with understanding and interpret the events to comprehend and respond to complex questions text independently. Speak in English on a given idea, personal experience, describing an experience and so on. Okay. And lastly, we will be able to write a paragraph describing our personal experience of doing something. It may be an experience or uh, an experience in which you are put into trouble, but how are you going to write? We are going to write undergoing a process. What is that process? We will jot down ideas. The we are writing does not come all in a sudden. There is a process. We will jot down ideas, we will draft, uh, edit, then that is what Divya is going to demonstrate to you. You also will be doing it. Come on learners. So, here is the summary of the story in order to recall our what we did last time Divya and me I will be reading it alternatively and followed by an activity by Divya in which she will rearrange the story in order to create a coherent story. A seagull sitting alone on the ledge is very afraid and scared of flying. His brothers and the sister have learned to fly and parents are busy with them. His parents brothers and the sister keep coaxing and asking him to fly repeatedly. But the seagull has no confidence that its wings will support him. Standing on the brink of the ledge, he tries to fly but too afraid. He was feeling extremely hungry and frustrated seeing his brothers and sister enjoy. So the sisters, uh, sister and the brothers started flying and enjoying food. He cried and begged for food. Mother picked up a piece of fish, came nearer, halted almost within the reach of his beak. So that he can see and attempt to fly. The seagull was surprised and mad with hunger, dived at the fish. The seagull fell outwards and downwards with a scream, terrorized with his heart still. The wings cut through the air and he was no longer afraid. No, on seeing the fish, no, he dived and started, attempted something. He felt that his heart was still stopping. He was going to die. But he cut through the air because he was flapping. So he started, he is no longer afraid. He completely forgot that he was able to fly. But now flew over the sea, cawing and screaming. Now he said, ga, 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 ga and started flying. So, at last he has made his first flight. Learners, we have 
go through the summary again. Now, let me put you into a task with Divya. Divya, here are the strips, the summary which we read out in strips. They are shuffled, I am shuffling again. You will have to pick up coherently what comes first, what comes next. As you have read the story, then arrange it. Here it is, come on, take the challenge. The leg is very afraid and scared of Fine, fine, you got the first one. The first one is easier, others will be difficult, come on. Right? Number one, a young seagull sitting alone on the ledge is very afraid and scared of flying. Number two, his brothers and the sister have learned to fly and parents are busy with them. Fine. Third, parents, brothers and their sister keep coaxing and ask him repeatedly to fly. Fine. Number four, but the seagull has no confidence that its wings will support him. Number five. Standing on the brink of the ledge, he tries to fly, but too afraid. Mm -hmm. Number six, he was feeling extremely hungry and frustrated, seeing his brothers and sister in joy. Number seven, he cried and begged for food. Fine. Eighth, mother picked up a piece of fish, came nearer, halted almost within, its, uh, within the reach of its beak. Mm -hmm. Number nine, the seagull was surprised and mad with hunger, dived at the fish. Mm -hmm. Number 10, the seagull fell outwards and downwards with a scream, terrorized with his heart still. Too scared. <laughs> now? 11, the wings cut through the air and he was no longer afraid. Okay, he started flying. Mm. He completely forgot that he was able to fly but now flew over the sea, cawing and screaming. Fine. At last, he made his first flight. So learners, Divya has arranged the strips into coherent story. You may think and you may ask why is this activity needed and important. Learners, when we read a story or when we listen to a talk or read newspaper, anything, so what is language use? We will able to, we will should be able to derive meaning out of it, arrange it in pointers, I mean arrange it in a coherent manner. Learners, if you look at your textbook, Divya, it is there in the textbook at the end of the lesson in the online textbook QR code. This activity is there. You will have to rearrange to make a meaningful coherent story. There it is online. You can click and till you get it right, it will not show you, uh, yes, you are right. Otherwise, you will say incorrect, try again, try again. So, this is a one of the ways to learn, understand the stories. If you are not getting it, go back, read, then again do it. I want to thank you, Divya. Learners, thank you very much. So, now we will move on to the next activity. Uh, the activity is putting again into a good task. Learners, for you also this is important. We are going to do speak in English based on the understanding of the story. Learners, the activity goes this way. Firstly, we know the seagull took time to fly and we think that flying is very easier but a lot of things involved. For an example, the next lesson also you will see uh, the black aeroplane, uh, the aeroplane, how it flies, how scientists or uh, aeronautics engineers or uh, what is it, mm, Wright brothers who, who did uh, uh, the aeroplane, uh, Wright brothers no, if I am right. Uh, how they got the idea of flying, fine. So, they looked at the words, humans have been trying to fly and they fell. Even uh, Renaissance time, Leonardo da Vinci attempted to fly, but he fell. He, he tied two wings and tried to flap it, then he fell. Then, uh, then it took centuries for scientists to evolve an aeroplane. So, now the speaking activity is, what makes the bird fly? So, it is a kind of uh, biological science to know or yeah, the thermodynamics to know how an aeroplane flies. But that is not our concern. We will un try to understand how your bird flies. So, I am going to give you some clues, inputs, written inputs, read it, how your bird learns to fly. 
is a question. The birds have their a kind of body construction designed to fly. We can't fly, and they have wings, of course. Even if they have wings, what makes them fly? So I'm going to give you some inputs, written inputs, describing the body of the uh, birds and how they fly. So you will take two three minutes to read the pointers. Then you are going to speak out. All right, learners, ready? This will also appear on the on your screen, learners. Look at it for two three minutes. Then you speak to yourself or speak to a friend, sibling, parents. So you are going to speak to me or the learners. Learners, as I said, here are the clues for your speaking activity, Divya. So there are two things, as it appears on your screen. How do birds fly? It has the body construction. That's one. The other one is, uh, how is the body of the bird, which makes it fly? The, the other one is, how do they actually fly? One is taking off, soaring. Another is gliding. Third is flapping. So we know that. Uh, we only watch it. But what makes them fly? Why don't they fall? That would as a child, every child must have wondered, how do they fly? I can't fly. That's right. Come on, come on. You would. I'll give you a minute to see the receive the clues. Then you will have to speak ten sentences. Come on. All right. You may read out. The body is different. Birds have hollow bones. Bones are very light and strong. Their feathers are light. Shape of their wings is perfect for catching the air. They eat lot of energy food. Lungs are great at getting oxygen and very efficient. This makes them not to get tired. A streamlined body. This helps reduce the force of drag. Okay, wait. This is how the body of the bird. Which enables it fly. Let me tell you an example. In between, all animals walk except birds. Walks in four legs, but we humans walk in two legs. So that's a great thing, which makes also which makes us human. But sometimes uh, we may wonder, why don't you fall? So there is something which manages our body. Same thing, birds also have something. So. That is one part. We'll have to speak it on it, uh, learners. Keep that in mind. Then, how do they actually fly? Soaring, special kind of glide in which the bird flies in rising air. Current, called a thermal, because of the air is rising. The bird mountain maintains its height to the ground. G gliding, when a bird is gliding, it doesn't have to go any work. Do any work. The wings are held out of the side of the body and do not flap. Flapping, bird's wings flap with up and down motion. This propels them. Okay, this propels the birds to fly. Divya, learners, you got you got your clues now. At least ten sentences. That means five for describing the bird's uh, body, five for how they fly. So here are the clues for you. I think I am a very considerate teacher. I have given lot of clues. Generally, otherwise we, we, they, it is given some words only. So come on, try. Don't bother if you go wrong. Means mm. any mistake or slip of the tongue. Speech comes. Speech is speech, not formal, very formal language. Come on, go ahead. We all imagine how birds fly. The body of the birds are constructed in such a manner that they are meant to fly. Very good. Uh, their body is different. Birds have hollow bones, which supports them. Bones are very light and strong. Their feathers are very light, which helps them to fly. They eat lot of energy food, such as nuts or any other fruit, which gives them energy, so they can fly efficiently. This makes them fly. Fine. Very good. Well, well said. More than five sentences. I'm happy. Because lot of clues given, so she, you have now described the body construction design of the bird, which makes it fly. Now, how do they actually fly? Like the way an aeroplane takes off, or uh, a, a, a automobile, an auto or a vehicle starts. Come on. Hmm. Flying involves a special technique. Good. 
soaring is one of them. Special, this is a special kind of glide in which birch flies in rising air current. It's called thermal. Because of the rising air, the birds maintain its height to the ground. The second technique is gliding. When the bird is gliding, it doesn't have to do any work. The wings are held out of the side of the body and they do not flap. Flapping, birds wings flap with up and down motion and this propels them to fly. Oh, propelling is going up, the way rocket or aeroplane takes off. So this is how. Okay, there are uh, two ways you have said. One is describing the body of the bird, which, which is constructed to fly, and how actually they fly. One is soaring, gliding, and flapping. flapping. Learners, this is how we describe uh, an event, a process. You know that you are in class 10. In your chemistry practicals, physics practicals, you describe one after another. These are all just kind of, though it's happening before you, you are just describing. So, I may, may I ask you to do it again so that you can speak better. Okay. Okay, learners, you also try. Second time see trying. Why we are doing it, learners, the way you must understand, language learning takes time. You have to work in language with language. All these activities, rearranging and speaking, reading, writing, we are working. Why language is called a skill, a mechanic, a, a sports person, they acquire the skill. How do they acquire skill? They do it, then acquire. The way, same way learners, you have to use language for purposes. The we have used it for rearranging language for purpose, then got the clues in order to speak out. So, this is working with, working in language. Swimming, without getting into water, nobody learns swimming. So, this is how. Now, you got the idea? Once you have spoken, second time, five phase sentences, I was happy with the way you described the body of the bird, but I was not very happy the way you described how it flies. Now, improve and speak. Come on, learners. We all wonder how birds fly. The construction of their body is different from other animals. They are meant to fly. They, uh, they have hollow bones, which are very light and strong, which helps them to fly. They eat high energy food, which supports their lungs and uh, makes them fly efficiently. They have a streamlined body, which reduces the force of drag. Uh, their feathers are very light, Good. which supports them to fly. Next one. Hmm. Uh, there are special techniques which birds use to fly. Soaring. This is a very special kind of technique uh, in which a birds glide in a rising air current, which is called thermal. Because of the rising air current, the birds maintains the distance from the ground. Gliding. When a bird is gliding, it does not have. Uh, it does not do any work. Uh, they do not flap. They just, held their uh, they just held their body in the air. Flapping, birds, wing, uh, birds wings flap with up and down motion which propels them to fly. Uh, okay, fine, well done, well done. Um, I was expecting, you said that three things, soaring, gliding, first one you said very well, well improved. You have learned from what you have spoken, what you had spoken for the first time. Then, uh, yeah, uh, that's what, this is what learners, the way we understand language processing. There is, we have a great thing called brain, which processes what you are speaking. You have now, whatever you spoke first, that is there in your brain as experience, now you, you worked on it. This is how experiential learning takes place. This is possible in science, social science, everything, even today, day-to-day uh, -day activities of uh, going to an ATM machine or uh, uh, milk booth to buy milk, every, everything, road, road, rap, road traffic, driving. So, uh, learners, we have learned to speak also in this lesson. I am going to stop it here. Before we close it, let me thank you and Divya uh, with one activity. What is that activity? We are going to do a writing activity as you are homework or classwork or whatever work and 
write your experience of doing something for the first time in which you struggled. Divya said that cycling and some more things, something doing alone, nobody is there to support, any such thing. Sometimes, I, when I was a child, my mother used to ask me, you go to the shop and get this. And after 6 o'clock in the evening, I was really worried because I never liked it because in the darkness, it appears that the trees, the, the plants and trees were somebody standing and threatening me. So, and, but slowly I learned to. So, I, I, I had written about it. So, learners, write it. As you write, let us follow process of post writing. So, let me explain it, how a writer writes a good piece of work. For example, you have described, uh, you have spoken about the bird and its uh, flight. So, if you have to write or your personal experience, first you jot down your ideas, like the way the pointers are given, then make an outline, then write the first draft. In the first draft, do not bother about some mistakes and all language use. Then improve it, write the second draft, then see for the spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes, edit it, then write the final draft. This is how one learns to write. Many writers do it. The newspaper which you read every day, it undergoes at least three, four times this process, means editing. Then someone will write, okay, let us change it, do that. Then at last it finalizes. So, this is called process approach to writing. Learners at least attempt every week if you have time or every month twice one, one piece of work for your assignment. Otherwise, your own some writing, some short story, some incident so that you improve writing. Thank you, Divya. Th thank you, learners, uh, for having participated. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It has been a great learning experience.